Tamara, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, it is so such a treat for me to be on here live with you, Hannah. Thank you for having me. Oh my pleasure. I'm so glad we got that worked out. And um, I, really, I want I love when people share their experience. So tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and of course, we met at a really amazing. Um, business retreat, yeah. which I'll talk about in a little bit, but um, let's hear a little bit of your story. Yeah. So I've been um, a consultant for a little over six years. Um, my my life before then, I was in nonprofit um, upper management been working in nonprofit for 14 years. And then there was um, a situation at my organization where I had to either compete with the staff that I managed and coached and cared for for four years um, to keep my job or just to strike it out on my own. And believe it or not, I mean, I, I've been laid off before. So I was, I was at the point where I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to try my own luck and start my own business and just figure it out. Um, and I've been figuring it out ever since then for the past six years. So it's, it's been a very um, interesting and exhilarating and everything like a ball of emotions, just um, having my own business. Absolutely. Well, and I think some of our listeners can relate because they are small businesses themselves. So uh, not only here at Kombucha Camp do we teach people how to make their own kombucha at home, but we also support those who are making kombucha commercially. And mm -hmm. for a lot of folks, what starts as a hobby can mm -hmm. turn into a side hustle. And then you're like, how do I bridge this gap between shit, you know, making my side hustle something that's actually viable? Mm -hmm. um, so, so what is your field? I know you said you worked in nonprofit. You went on your consultant. Yeah. What exactly are you helping to support people with? Yeah. So I, I help people with all the, um, behind the scenes operation of their business. I help them with finding the right technology. Um, and helping them to integrate that into their everyday business needs. Uh, and so what's interesting about what I do is oftentimes people look for the framework. They look for the method and how to do something. And then the technology is an afterthought. Whereas if you don't find the right technology, you're not going to do it, right? You're, you're not going to complete that project or whatnot because it's just that much of an issue. It's that important. So I just really decided to look at it from that technology and that tool perspective first and really understand how people work and what's important to them and be able to match them with the right tool. Yeah, and I think that's really important, especially because there are so many at least in the kombucha industry and probably many other industries, accidental entrepreneurs. So these are right people who weren't setting out to start a business. They, through whatever uh, gift of the universe, fell into doing that. And now they need tools and support so that they, you know, they can take that idea, they can take this opportunity instead of it letting letting it fizzle out because they're not sure how to execute, right. but getting the tools and support they need to move forward. So, um so what's like an example of uh, or maybe a case study of someone you've worked with and how you've been able to support them through that process? Sure. So I started with uh, CRM because, you know, six years ago, CRM was just really starting to make a big splash for small business owners. Um, and there's an explosion there thousands, thousands of those systems out, right? So um, I connected with a young lady. She, she's a, she was a consultant and a training coach. And uh, she connected with a young lady who started um, an online program um, for follow-up, right? Like charge up your follow-up or something to that extent. And during that program, the the young lady suggested that they um, connect with a specific CRM in order to automate and input a lot of the follow-up um, steps that she she was teaching at the time. And so the young lady, of course, she was like everyone else, had their her information spread across different um, software. She had some stuff on Post-it, everywhere, right? And the lady said, well, you're going to have to manually pull that data together and enter it into your system. And of course, like she, she thought like, absolutely not. Hell no. <laughs> Excuse my French. Right? So, 
she she thought she was at a point that is like if i have to do this then this program is not going to work for me these follow-up steps i just won't be able to complete it so i was able to find her a system where she can integrate her email she can connect it to her email and the system will pull all that information in so she did maybe 10 percent or less of the data entry that the lady told her she needed to and of course it was a different system than what she proposed um, but it worked really well for her and so she was able to complete add in all those steps into her system it was the system that reminded her of when she needed to follow up it acted more of an like an assistant to her and so she was able to um, forecast an extra twenty thousand dollars into her pipeline and she closed about a good 10% plus of more sales that she she would not have if she didn't have the system. So it was, so it was just exciting. to break it down for some folks, CRM, that's a customer relationship management system. Right. So some examples of that might be like Salesforce. Would right. we also think of like a MailChimp? I know that's specific for sending out emails, but um, a lot of people can a lot of people um, think MailChimp is kind of like a CRM system, but it doesn't have that one-on-one -on -one component where you can talk to somebody on a one-on-one -on -one piece so but people do clunk, you know lump that in together with them so it's salesforce hubspot um zendesk what else there's there's quite a few popular systems out there that people gravitate to yeah, absolutely. Well, it sounds like what you're doing is you're taking, you're listening to the needs of your client mm -hmm. and matching them with the tool that's going to work for their style. Right. And I can say as a small business owner of a couple of different businesses, having that type of tool sounds incredible. Um, and, and so how did, how did you, how did you decide that you were sort of a software matchmaker, if you will? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great little <laughs> uh, nickname matchmaker software matchmaker uh, so I started I started out in in CRM systems because I was struggling with it myself as I was getting started I had trouble with um, keeping up with all that information not only the different people that I met and connected with but being able to identify if they were hot warm or cold or being able to to really capture the essence of the conversations that we had and just keeping all that information um, in a place that was easily accessible no matter where I was at the moment, right? So I would onboard a number of different systems to see how they work and to try them out. And some I would actually invest and I would purchase and build it out to later on find out that it didn't work and try to figure out why it didn't work and so I did that for like the first year, just trying to figure those things out. And I must have onboarded a get like 18 plus systems. <laughs> where wow. I you really figured out. On your homework. Yeah. yeah. Like I had to figure those things out. And that's when I realized that there are some universal questions that you must know and be aware of before you even start the, the whole CRM um research right okay, there now, are some things you need this to know sounds about. like you're mm -hmm. landing on some gold nuggets here what yeah. are these universal questions what are what are some of these things that small business owners need to understand before they go and try to plug into a system yeah so first they need to identify all the the software and pieces that they already use what what are the technologies that are staple for you to run your business right you have to understand those and you want to make sure that your system, you have a way to integrate those technologies into your CRM system so that you don't have to continually jump in and out to find the information that you're looking for, right? So that's the first thing. Does it integrate with my existing technology? The second piece is making sure that they have the level of support that you need. For some people, having a knowledge base where you can just go and read what you need is fine. For me, I would need it to be able to jump on the phone with people anytime I had a question. So knowing what your expectations are and making sure that that system has it is important for the support. And then there's also understanding how you organize your information. So what's the first, what's the first 
thing that you look for when you when you open up your email or you go to talk to a client? What's the most important information you need to know, right? So if it's their name and their contact information that need to go first, that's one thing. If it's really just being able to see the last conversation or email that you had, it's another. So understanding how you need things organized is important as well. And then there are some other pieces, too, around, well, what do you want to track in your system? Because one piece is how do you input what information you want to input. The other piece is what do you need to measure to make sure you're on track? How do you know that you're on track? So sales goals, right? If you have any type of goals for how many sales you want to win for the month or just being able to keep track of that process, so if something breaks down, you understand where to find that problem and be able to resolve it. Like those things are important to understand as well. And so when you be when you start looking for CRMs, you'll be able to just filter them through and be able to identify what's right for you and what's not in a very quick and short amount of time. So I was able to run through like hundreds of uh, of systems within a matter of minutes because I had these specific criteria set up that if they didn't need it, then I don't even have to look at it any further, right? Um, and be able to narrow your list from like 20 to three, right? So that's the thing is that you wanna be able to filter all those through and be able to make the right choice. So your top three, no matter what, you can't go wrong if you pick one or the other. Um, so it sounds like you're starting with a technology audit, mm -hmm. right, or a software audit. Mm -hmm. What are the things that I'm actually using right now? From there, it's also thinking about what is the information that is most important for me to know about each person as I'm interacting with them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a kombucha business, this would could be customers who are purchasing your product direct from you. This mm -hmm. could be, um, you know, interfacing with grocery stores, with retailers, with distributors. It could be interfacing with your vendors and suppliers, people who are providing you with the raw materials. Mm -hmm. It also then probably extends over into your employees and how um, right. how you can with them and um and so thinking about all these different types of relationships that you have to have and i think as entrepreneurs sometimes we don't take the time to let ourselves fully digest or process that mm -hmm. level of information we're like no i have to spend time doing however when we take that step back and we can allow ourselves to plan and to your point make sales goals um you know i've recently been through this process myself because you, you know i've I'm someone who's like, ah, if there's enough money in the bank, I don't need to know what's going on, except that says, um, especially with the pandemic, right, we've right. all sort of seen how we need to get more control over what it is we're doing. And it can feel like, oh, why would I invest in a person to help me do this? Well, most of us aren't going to take the time to figure these things out on our own. But if we were, it starts with that technology audit, then it's understanding who you're connecting with and what information you need from them. And finally, it's how do you like to be supported, mm -hmm. which I think is so crucial because, um, you know, uh, a knowledge base can be great, but if it doesn't have all the information you need and you can't connect with a chat bot or a chat person or a person on the phone um, and maybe you have to wait for email responses, that might not be the right tool for you to use. But um, so it sounds like you're someone who then helps people think about these things, process and digest this information, and then match them up with what you think is going to be a best fit because you've already done the legwork to understand how to do it. Right. Like, I've already been through hell and back with 18 different systems. <laughs> so it's like I, I have a really good idea of, of the issues that people will run into when looking for a system to help you manage your relationships. And so it's, it's also important that with each system that you onboard, that you set aside some time to learn and explore that system outside of the time that you actually use it, right? Because if you mm -hmm. don't have that time, then you, you, you won't continue to, to use it. It won't be like a consistent habit. And that's one of the main pieces that's, that people miss when they onboard tools is that we have to make it a habit. So it's my job to make it a habit for my clients to use their system on a consistent basis. So do you have a tool that you provide to people to help them figure out or navigate so that you can figure out which pieces there? How, how do you help people 
um, you know, someone wants to work with you, mm -hmm. how, what are sort of your next steps to supporting them in that process? Yeah, that's a good question. So the first thing I do is I meet with them and I get a, a really good idea and sense of not only what they do, but what's important to them and their timeline. How soon do you need to onboard them, right? Um, and who else would need to use it? Like you said, who are all um, part of this team that will be using it and things? And from there, we talk about what that investment would be for you and how much support you'll need from me. So it's, do I help you to find it? Do I find it for you and just give you the short list and walk you through that? Do you need help with building it out and the accountability? Like those are the different questions that we need to, to answer to figure out whether my services is the right fit. Um, and then from there, we actually go, we start working with each other. Either I do the the report and the audit and bring it to you or we work through it um, together uh, and you reach that uh, point where you decide on the system and then I continue to check in every now and then if that's your package just the selection so we have to figure out what's the best place to meet you um, in order for it to be a value and worthwhile to you and your company well that's all that's really great. So it sounds like even if you're, you know, someone who maybe is on a budget, they can still afford your services because it's sort of choose your own adventure. Right. Um, you can get that information. You can have that person who's going to use this assessment tool to help you understand your needs. And then depending on how much uh, personal handholding you need through that process, um, sounds like you're able to really match people up with the right tools they need to be successful. And that when you're matched with those right tools, you meet your goals, right. you increase productivity. You're not spending time, you know, with things on post-it notes and where did I put that and what was that information and who am I supposed to follow up with? Because that's, that's sort of in this world of infinite um, opportunity and infinite contacts, how do, you, how do you keep up with all the different little ways in which people can come to your business mm -hmm. Um, whether, and again, all the different buckets that they fit. Yeah, absolutely. I think people, I think we underestimate how much it takes, how much time it takes for us to find information that we're looking for. Uh, because we think in our minds, it only takes a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes is probably 20 minutes. You, it's probably taking you 20 minutes to find that email to get that little piece of information, if not longer. I've had times where it's taken me almost an hour searching through my email to try to find something. So just to be able to eliminate that, you can save yourself quite a few hours each week um, by having something that you don't even have to th think about it. You just go into the system, type in something, and boom, the information is there for you. This sounds really great. And so if I'm wanting to work with you, Tamara, how do I get in touch? Sure. So uh, you can email me uh, at Tamara at TamaraBurkett.com. I know that's long, but <laughs> you can remember that. I'm here on Instagram. You can uh, DM me on Instagram. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, I'm, I'm very easily accessible uh, for people. You can go to my website. It's, it's my name as well. Um, to look me up and, and schedule an appointment directly. So there are a couple of ways. Yeah, so anyone who's watching this right now, just go ahead and give Tamara a quick follow. And we have a really amazing giveaway. Um, you have generously offered to help one person um, generate a profile. So to give us a little information on what that entails. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so I have this uh, this spreadsheet I shouldn't probably I don't want to scare away your people when I say that kombucha phone <laughs> no I'll walk you through but I really help people with identifying where some of the issues may be challenges that they're having and from there we can help identify if you're looking for a tool what tool can support you in resolving those challenges so it's about a 45 minute um, to at most an hour time that we will spend together working through some of your numbers, identifying where your challenges are, and then identifying the right tools for you. That's really great. And yeah, so we'll have that giveaway uh, listed for folks tomorrow. So don't forget to follow, like, and share. And maybe you'll be the lucky one who gets this 
wonderful support to help you get more clarity on your business and where you're headed for 2023. Mm -hmm. So um, that sounds awesome. But I also want to just quickly shout out, we met at George Bryant's um, customer journey experience. And yeah. I have to say, I have found his his information about how to support customers and that whole journey so relevant um, to what I'm doing. And I think to what any it, beyond just my customers, like every single person in my life, right. I can put through this journey. And what I really loved about his event was how he brought together so many heart centered entrepreneurs. And I, we really connected mm -hmm. at that event as well. And just would love to hear a little bit about, you know, why are you so passionate about helping people get organized with their numbers and their systems? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, that was a, a life changing event for me. I think I, I was looking for that and didn't even know, right? Until I arrived and I experienced it like that, that's exactly what I needed, right? That understanding of that and being around people who understood the importance of that human to human connection, right? So it was amazing event. And so I'm a person that I like complexity and I like to figure out a way to simplify it for others. So to be thorough in that and simplify, it just, it makes life so much easier. You're able to achieve uh, that state of flow that people talk about all the time and, and having the right tool is so important. So just to be able to dive into that piece and figure it out so then I can turn around and help other people who are struggling with that, so they can obtain like that state of flow. I feel like that is that is an amazing work. So that's what pulled me in because it is difficult. It's like, well, I can tackle I can tackle that so that others don't have to. That's amazing that you're able to um, distill complex information down and make it simple. I feel like that's a lot of what I do here at Kombucha Camp. Um, kombucha can be confusing. I mean, insert sort of widget process here. It's not just kombucha. It could be uh, any type of thing that you're focused on. But uh, when you're able to break it down into steps that are easy for people to understand, that give them the confidence and the resources they need in order to go out there and, and to build their business um, and or to understand that process. I mean, that's such a gift to be able to share that with the world. So thank you so much, Tamara, for being here today. Was there anything else you wanted to share with everybody? It could be about anything. Yeah. So there was a moment in time when I brewed my own kombucha. I think it was fabulous. It was so much fun. It was such a, I looked at it as almost a science experiment. Um, but that whole idea is that I can make something like kombucha for myself and experiment and add those flavors. It was a lot of fun. So, you know, I understand the health benefit and all that comes attached to it. So I'm just, I'm grateful to meet you and that you have this community for folks who really want to learn more about kombucha and um, really how to improve their lives. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Well, and it's it sounds like you support um, entrepreneurs who want to improve their lives by improving their systems. So thank you so much for taking the time today to connect with us. And yeah. uh, we'll be sharing more about your offer in the next couple of days. But thank you so much, Tamara. Really loved having you here thank today. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.